warning. This episode contains strong language. And I will tell you the joy about being in Austin, and a lot of people would ask me, what's it like working with the other senators, you know? <laughs> and, you know, um, and we all get it. You know, the senators, we get it. We understand that, you know, when you're running an election, you're going to be very vocal about what you stand for. And, sure. you know, that's part of what running a race is about, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. But when we get together on the floor of the Senate, we all get it. You know, we all respect each other. We get, you know, okay, you know, Kirk Watson, who is the, you know, former senator for the Austin area, and I got along beautifully, as, as we all did. Now, we had great uh, political disagreements. Sure. Right? But we understood the process and we respected it. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Plate Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. All right, we have a great episode today. My guest is Connie Burton. She was amazing, okay, this woman. I absolutely love speaking to her, to be honest with you. It was just a hilarious, um, great, cool, you know, talking about topics conversation. It was just this whole thing. I loved it. Um, what a podcast should be. Um, so I love these episodes. Um, Connie is, if you don't know, she was in the Texas State Senate. Uh, she is a Republican, and um, she recently started a news media outlet organization um, called the Texan News Media Outlet Organization. That's too many things, right? Okay, news outlet. There you go. <laughs> media organization. Boom. See, I just I combined all that for just because it's that big. Okay, that's why I combine all that. It's just it's that big a thing. So check it out, guys. The Texan, you know, check it out. Look, her thing is put the news out, you decide. So it kind of seemed like if, you know, doesn't matter what side you're on. So even me as a, as a Democrat, I, I, you know, I could read that. So cool. I'm in. Look, I read everything, right? So, um, uh, all right. So yeah, it was just a great conversation. Look, Connie, again, she was in the Senate. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. Talked a little bit about her how she grew up and how she got to, you know, where she's at, uh, you know, getting into politics and activism and, and, you know, wanting to do something, right? We all have those thoughts. We're sitting at home, armchairing. <laughs> we all know what we're talking about, armchair quarterbacking it. Uh, we all do it. She finally, you know, she was a person that got up and said, I, I'm going to get in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I can make a change. Love it. Love the story. Love the, you know, I mean, you got to respect somebody that's, that's done something like that. So, um, yeah, it was a really great conversation. Look, we covered the uh, first presidential debate. We covered the vice president debate. It was right after that that we recorded it. And actually, the, this episode is coming out um, just before the second presidential debate, if there will be one. So um, we also covered just the election in general, right, a little bit. We covered Black Lives Matter movement. We also covered criminal justice reform. And that was a really great conversation. You know, that's something that you see people from different sides of the aisle, just no question to get behind. Um, so just a really cool conversation, right? I just really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, respect her opinions, um, not necessarily agree with all of them. That's okay. She probably doesn't agree with all of mine. I know she doesn't agree with all of mine and that's okay. Um, I just like that we can have a conversation, you know, it was awesome. She was just really funny, really down to earth. Um, you know, really cool. Re I really enjoyed Connie. It was a, a really cool conversation. So I wish, wish her the best uh, with the Texan, wish her the best with everything she's got going. Um, and uh, yeah, really cool conversation. So check it out. You decide if that's something for you or not, right? That, that's up to you. Um, she said they put the facts out and then from there you decide. I'm cool with that, right? Okay. So anyway, uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right. Before we get to that, don't forget, check out our website. Go to thelonestarplate.com. You can find all the information about the podcast, past episodes, you know, all that sort of stuff. So we got some really great stuff coming up. And as always, thank you so much for listening and uh, supporting us. And, um, you know, it just, it keeps us going. So we appreciate it. We got some really cool episodes coming up and great guests and just great things coming up. So thank you as always. All right, let's get to it. 
My guest today on the Lone Star Play podcast is Connie Burton. Enjoy. <laughs> anyway, yes. right? It's like we weren't yes. prepared for this. No, nobody was prepared to be like a tech expert. Uh, exactly. You know. Well, thank you so much, uh, Connie, for taking the time today. Absolutely, honored to be on here. Yeah, really, really excited to talk to you. Um, you know, we're in election cycle. This is just like crazy time, right? Every four years. Yeah. Yes. It's a crazy time. Um, yes, it is. So yeah, Connie. Uh, well, first of all, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And I really wanted to start kind of jump into maybe your history a little bit. That way we can give some of our listeners and viewers that may not know you, you know, a little bit of background on, on who you are and what you've done and, you know, what, sure. what you come on here to talk about. So I'll let you kind of start there. Um, Okay. What, what, you know, yeah, let you take it from there. Please. I'll just kind of give a, a kind of a big overview, yeah. um, first and foremost. So I grew up in South Texas, went to college in the University of North Texas. So I've been in North Texas ever since. Nice. Uh, Shout longer. out, UNT. Yes. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, because of my age, I've been up here longer than I was down there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, you know, married, started a family, um, you know, uh, had my own uh, wedding consulting business. Then I was a stay at home mom. Um, and then all of a sudden I woke up one day, I'd always been a voter. Uh, but one day I woke up and, and the party that represented me didn't seem to be doing the things um, that I voted for them for. Right. Yeah. And so I got very active. I was very frustrated. It's like, Hey, I've been giving you my vote all these years. These are the principles I believe in. These are the principles you're supposed to believe in. Um, and in my mind, they were not. So I just kind of got very actively involved um, with, uh, you know, organizations, uh, different kind of think tanks to kind of figure out, okay, what's going on here. Yeah. Um, and soon from there decided to uh, help people get elected people that, you know, looked at things from my perspective um, to get them in office. So I was just a, you know, a political activist that helped people get elected at the state and local level. Um, then, uh, was looking for somebody to run, uh, for the state Senate seat that represented me, um, ended up being the one running for that state Senate seat, um, <laughs> won that state Senate seat. I was down in Austin for four years. Um, this last election cycle we lost, um, and, you know, I still am in the fight, um, and so one of the things that I think everybody can come together on, maybe, I think anyway, right now, <laughs> is our frustration with the media. Uh, many of us have a frustration with the media. I do for, for very particular reasons. You know, I, I just see it as, and I think a lot of people do, uh, media has become opinion only rather than just reporting the news, right? I mean, I, it, it insults a lot of us. I know I'm insulted by a lot of what I read. Um, when so-called reporters put out information, you know, it's it's got all sorts of emotional words kind of um, told from their worldview rather than just reporting the news. And sure. so, um, you know, after this election cycle, my husband and I, who had been very frustrated with the media for many years, not only from a grassroots activist perspective, but certainly as an elected official perspective, you know, you definitely see what you say versus how it comes out in uh, content. Uh, there's sure. a difference. Sure. So we decided to start this uh, new media organization uh, it's called The Texan. And it is the Texan.news is the URL. And, you know, we are all, all of us at The Texan openly state we are right of center. You know, I am a conservative Republican. Every, anybody who knows me knows that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we say with this organization, yes, all of us who write there and who are a part of it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I had a little a little notation come through. Um, <laughs> you know, we tell everybody that, um, you know, we are right of center, but what we are about is giving you straight news reporting and 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 where the right of center comes in is you know we on the right 
kind of feel like we've been, you know, uh, the issues that are important to us have not been portrayed from the perspective that, that we think is respectful to our worldview. Um, sure. And so we just kind of want to talk about the issues that don't get talked about a lot of times from a lot of the media and talk about them in the way from uh, why we believe in them. You know, I, at the end of the day, what I want all of us is to argue is to have a difference of opinion which we all are, obviously. I mean, that's the beauty <laughs> of America, right? Sure. We all have different opinions and can and express them. Yeah. But I get so frustrated that we argue over, I don't know, I'd say rabbit holes, you know, that really don't have anything to do with the issue at hand. You know, yeah. what I want to do is us talk and discuss and argue over the actual issues, sure. right? You know, and not uh, have people dislike or even hate each other because of of a perceived or because of some perception right sure. and so that's i think what you know my goal with the texan is is just to get straight reporting of the news let everybody read it everybody can come away with some people may say oh i love what this elected official did somebody may read that same article and say this is awful right sure. but but it's sticking to the issue itself so sorry, that might have taken too long, but that's kind no, of me no. to overview. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I was completely um, engaged in what you were saying, like 100%. So uh, no, it was great. Um, I like hearing a lot of that. Look, um, you know, just full disclosure, I'm a, I would consider myself a liberal Democrat, uh, sure. but I like what I like what you're saying. I Good. like the fact of let me just see the facts and I'm right. going to, through my lens, I will see it that's how I right. see it because that's how it is for everybody, no matter what. Right. It, that's exactly. really what it is. Perspective. Exactly. exactly. And I will tell you the joy about being in Austin. And a lot of people would ask me, what's it like working with the other senators, you know, <laughs> and, you know, um, and we all get it. You know, the senators, we get it. We understand that, you know, when you're running an election, you're going to be very vocal about what you stand for. And, sure. you know, that's part of what running a race is about. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. But when we get together on the floor of the Senate, we all get it. You know, we all respect each other. We get, you know, OK, you know, Kirk Watson, who is the you know former senator for the Austin area. And I got along beautifully as as we all did. Now, we had great uh, political disagreements. Sure. Right. But we understood the process and we respected it. And at the end of the day, you know, I wouldn't go to Senator Watson. It was like, no, nah, he's not going to support this, you know, and, <laughs> and the same thing he would do with me. I remember one day asking him, hey, why didn't you ask me if I wanted to support that? And he looked at me with this very bland look, you know, like funny, <laughs> which just made me laugh, you know, I love that. that's really funny. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Really? <laughs> and that's really how it is um, in the Senate. I, I you know, and I, I appreciate I, I'm this way as an activist was this way. You get very angry when, you know, you, you, you want people to speak out about their, you know, their frustrations with the left. Sure. And I certainly do on Twitter all day, every day. <laughs> right. You know? um, but they also have to realize what a lot of people need to realize at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you can't you can't be that way once you're in an elected official in session. You've got to work with these people every day. Um, and frankly, at the state level, I, at least for me, how it was um, during those two terms is. Um, there's a lot of there. Uh, there's a, so many issues at the state level that you come together and you work, you know, um, on. There's a lot of division between more rural and urban uh, elected officials than sometimes there is between Republicans and Democrats. You know, oh, because that's interesting. Yeah, you know, you're talking about things, you know, like roads, for instance, you know, sure. basic things that, that the, the government should do, um, you know, um, funding of things. So, you know, rural people are going to want funding, you know, roads differently than the ur urban, you know. Sure. So, you know, when you start talking about just really meat and potatoes of what the government is supposed to do, you see a lot more uh, differences in those areas than there are, you know, sometimes um, with the with the difference of political parties not always <laughs> yeah yeah no but that makes sense uh in a lot of ways that that makes sense that almost seems to be like i don't know i mean you hear this in the news right or, or whatever but they, they talk about two americas right there, there being this the cities and the rural and i get That's it there's, correct. 
correct? It's a different yes. way of life, um, especially if you're from Texas, right? You uh, you completely yes. understand that here. Um, Absolutely. So I, I get it. Good. I get it. And that's what I love about it. I mean, I love, so I get to go around talking about the Texan and to different, you know, communities and particularly, not particularly, but sometimes small communities. And uh, the gal, Sarah White, who I think you've been talking to to schedule this, uh, she always yeah. goes with me. And we just love, I have always, my husband and I have always loved traveling the back roads of Texas, right? We've yeah. always loved that. But particularly these days, you know, it's just like, oh, I just love it. I We <laughs> giggle, you know, like we were just down in a very small community. And um, I don't know, just uh, the way we talk, the way we, you know, com uh, converse is just different. And I love that. Me right. Too. Me yeah. Too. So it should, be, it should be it should be what it shouldn't be looked at upon with scorn or or I'm better than you or anything. It's just different and great. Right. So a hundred percent. And we need the differences, right? You yes. need, yes. We can't all, it can't all be the same. It can't all no. be small town and it can't all be big. City. That's right. That's right. It's, totally it's agree. Big, the totally differences agree. help. Um, no, that's great. Um, I, I love this idea of, of the Texan. I love this idea of the media and, and look, to be honest with you, I, I would agree with you a lot on, uh, just as a normal everyday person who's not in politics, who's not in whatever, like, you know, a lot of people feel that way about the media on both sides, right? It's they just do. like, it, you look I've at it and it. you go, oh, my gosh, what, what do we do as people? You know, it's funny. I was having a conversation with uh, my cousin who's in Florida today this oh, morning uh -huh. and, and we were talking about the election. And, um, you know, this is something I'm sure you hear from a lot of people and a lot of Americans say this. I don't like either side. I don't like what's happening. I don't like politicians. Yep. I don't trust yep. any politician. Right. You've heard that. Oh, yeah. and, and that's. And I'm asking them, well, I get that. But it's like at the same time, you've got to vote for somebody, right? Like you've got to pick something and vote for somebody. But I, I understand his frustration. Absolutely. I get it. Right. I get where it's coming from. And, and I think that's where a lot of people feel. They feel no politician is working for them, no matter what side they say they're on or whatever the policies. That, that's how a lot of Americans feel is that Absolutely. the government isn't working for them, you know? Absolutely. So. And I don't know, you know, at the end of the day, we can have, you know, long philosophical conversations about this and everybody can come up with, with something different, but you know, yeah. is it the, you know, is it the media that has made it that way? Is it, you know, I, I don't think the 24 hour a day media world has done us any good. Right. You know, it just, it's like, the littlest of things become these big, huge discussions, sure. you know, and they're like, what does that have to do with anything? Sometimes, you know, one of my favorite lines is, we need to lighten up a little. <laughs> and I don't mean that, you know, big things need to be discussed and talked about, but sometimes these, you know, because again, oh, I agree. 24 hour a day media cycle, cable news, blah, you know, and it's like after a while, you know, they're just searching for something to talk about. Right. You know, oh, they're, they're making it not. I don't want to say making it. I don't want to go that far on the record. Now, if we were sitting alone, having a glass of wine, <laughs> that that's the words I would use. But on the <laughs> on the podcast, I would say, you know, like you said, they're, they're looking for yes. stories where, where they don't need to be or making right a, a mountain out of a molehill. Right. And it just becomes this huge and everything. Be, and it's like, wait a minute, we started out talking about, you know, um, I don't know, taxes or, you know, and, and now sure. we're talking about, I don't know what all, you know, um, yeah. whether the fly was on. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even watch it. I just so don't ask me about the debate because I couldn't watch it. Of course, I'm a Twitter hound. And I saw the best, you know, it's like, okay, I get it. It's funny. We need that. We need to laugh because if we don't laugh, sure. we're going to cry. Right. Sure. And so I, I enjoy humor like that. I love it, frankly, but if it consumes everybody and nobody's talking about the substance of the debating more. There's a problem, right? A hundred percent. Look, people, <laughs> people, normal people, right. Who are out here working or what we want to yeah. talk. About, we want to hear about the issues like that. Right. That is that is the truth. We don't want to see people arguing. We don't want to see people name calling or going back and forth, whatever side, right? We just want That's to see right. people talk about the issues. And you're right. The fly landing on his head became the <laughs> biggest story, which was just like the crate. Now, granted, I'm with you. It was a little I know, fun. It's funny. It, you know, it was like odd that. that the it was odd that the fly stayed there so long. That <laughs> moderator, go for and shoot it or something. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. The moderator comes. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President one you have second. A fly on your hand. 
Oh God. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm with you. I, I think yeah. a lot of people are, are there. You know, it's, it's too yeah, much. it is too much. It is too much, you know, and, and from my perspective and we see everything differently, but you know, I, 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 that's why I think, uh, and again, I, I don't want to, you know, because I don't want to force us into I'm not trying to force anybody into a political debate. I just want to show my perspective sure. so that people can understand it. But, you know, uh, that's how I believe in freedom. You know, that's why I believe in less government. You know, it's not from it's not out of a, you know, that I hate certain people, you know, that I many times get portrayed as right. It's just because I believe in freedom and people live in their lives. And let's stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. And, you know, you begin to have to do that in my mind with sure. so much government intervention and so much government and doing what, you know, supposedly solving every issue on the planet. <laughs> well, then you have, you know, then we all do have to think about everything and how this is affecting them and us, you know, but if we have less government, we just stick with our, you know, um, uh, core functions of government, then in my sure. mind, we have more freedom and we don't have to, you know, be at each other's throats so much. Right. That's, that's yeah. my perspective of it. But no, I, I respect it. Um, I, I see the benefits. I see both sides. You know, I'm a weird sure. person that way. I always, anytime <laughs> I jump into something, I, I just can't help but see every perspective. And that's great. You know, I do see the side of less government because when you look at things government do, you're like, oh my God, why would we put them more in charge of things, you know? But at the same time, I've also lived, you know, I have lived in other countries besides America. So, so I have seen, I have seen governments, you know, and government and America does great things in government too. Absolutely. So, right. So it's kind of like, well, they can do good things. So I see, again, I see both sides. For me, it's right. just, what are we, what is it that we're giving government control? Because I definitely right. don't believe government should have control over everything and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 definitely not. Uh, definitely believe in the people uh, being able to create a lot of these opportunities and, and resources themselves. But at the same time, I also think that the government should be there. I'm aware. I mean, really the only thing I think the government should have, I mean, I'm a big believer in Medicare for all. And maybe uh -huh. I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't believe that had I not lived in countries that had it. I saw the benefit of it. So you know, again, perspective, right? Maybe had I right. not had that experience, I would have a different perspective. But sure. aside from that, I definitely don't like the government and things, to be honest right. with you. Well, you know. and one, one of my talking points, I always when I would go to particularly um, groups that I know did not support my limited government uh, stand, um, you know, I would say, okay, you know, you don't like me personally, right? And, and that's okay. That's fine. You don't like my where I stand on the issues. And yet you want to give me more power. <laughs> <laughs> right? Smart. Yeah. Smart. So, so be careful what you ask for, right? Yep. You know, yep. because yep. the more power you give to government, if you don't like that person there, <gasps> you know, so again, I get it. No. I yeah. get it. I, I, 100 <laughs> I, I get it. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's one. We could do a whole podcast. Oh, um, absolutely. We a, could a series. We could do a whole series <laughs> on that, to be honest with you. Uh, real quick, Connie, before we move on uh, to the next thing, do you have any, um, you know, political aspirations? Like, I, I mean, I know, you know, of what just happened recently, but I don't know. Are you thinking like, you know what? I'm going to go for, I don't know, president or something. I, governor. <laughs> World, no. world, no, world. I like <laughs> no. I like um, so what I always tell everybody, I am definitely open um, to whatever happens. I and, and and I know a lot of people don't, you know, so I'm like, ah, she's a politician, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> but, uh, I always say, okay, when I was an activist helping other people to get elected, I loved it. It's like, okay, this is great. I have yeah. more, you know, this is my way of affecting what happens, right? Well, then I ran for office and, you know, never thinking I was going to run for office. Then I ran for office and then I was in the Senate and <laughs> it's like, okay, this is awesome. I get to actually, you know, do real yeah. things effect you know now and of course i never thought i would own a media organization <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. i own a media organization it's like hey this is pretty cool you know i'm able to affect things so basically what i'm saying is i never thought in every stage of my life that i didn't say this is what i want to do yeah. right it's just yeah. kind of how life happens and you mm. take it and you do it 
So, so whether, you know, running again is in my future, I don't know. I'm definitely open to it. Um, but we'll see, you know, I'm right now, I'm obviously focused on the Texan. The Texan is going to grow. It's always going to be there. You know, it's going to be successful. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, yeah. but you know, as far as what my personal, you know, future holds, who knows? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, love it. Love it. Love that. Um, what, what, if you were to compare the Texan to another news outlet, what, what would you compare it to, for instance, just, just so, as a. Yeah. So I, I look at us very much as a, uh, um, I don't know how to, uh, the Texas Tribune. I was going to use a, a word, but I'm not coming up with it. So the Texas Tribune is a statewide political news organization that based there in Austin. Um, you know, I was on the, uh, their panels a lot. I know Evan Smith very well, Ross Ramsey, all of those guys. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, I believe that they are left of center. Much of how they report things are, from my perspective, very left of center. And so I get frustrated with them. And like I said, I know them very well. I speak to them or spoke to them. I haven't now in a while. Um, and so I see us very much as similar to them, if you want to equate us to somebody yeah. else. Totally. Um, so we are a statewide news organization. Uh, of course, you know, like I said, even though we're, even though we're straight reporting, we, we are all right of center. So our perspective is different. Um, we, we have our office in Austin as well. I still live up here in North Texas. I go back and forth. Um, and then I travel Texas. So, so a lot of, you know, I, I, I guess that's what I would equate it to because really the Texas Tribune was the only for 10 years now, the only statewide political news organization. And so yeah. now the Texan is, is, um, the second one in Texas. Great. I love it more. I mean, I, I like that. I yes. like that there's more options and absolutely, more, absolutely. Yeah. That's what it's about, you know? Um, so in, in, in our mind, you know, it shouldn't just be one, it should be many. And yes. so we're going to be yes, one. Absolutely. Of <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure, like you said there, you consider them left of center. So you consider yourself right of center. So I think for you, it's probably a good balance and good dichotomy to have out there. Uh, for absolutely. The people, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. I got that. And I like that a lot. Um, that's cool. OK, let me see here. Let's move on. Um, OK, so uh, we talked a little bit about the election. Obviously, that's, uh, you know, it's on everybody's mind right now. We're in the last under 30 days. Right. And literally every day there's bombs <laughs> dropping on the news. Right. It's every day. It's I, unbelievable. I, I can't keep up. Uh, I, I know I, I can't keep up. So I'm, I'm really curious, just your general thoughts on the election and really this last 30 days. Really right. Bizarre. Um, yeah. as, 20, <laughs> excuse me, as 2020 has been, right? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Honestly, people ask me all the time, you know, I know that, you know, the, the polls, you know, on the one hand, were very, very off. On the other hand, you know, some were spot on, blah, 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 blah. you know, polling yeah. is, is, is an art in of itself. Um, sure. You know, it, it all de depends on, are these people that we're polling actually going to be at the polls, right? So you never know yeah. until after the fact. So I honestly do not know what is going to happen in the election. You know, one of the things, I don't know if a lot of people know, um, like we don't have straight ticket voting any longer in Texas. So in yeah. other words, you used to could go in and, you know, hit one button and you could vote all Republican or vote all Democrat. Now, people, you know, did it both ways. They would still sometimes go down and vote, you know, cross over and vote for this Democrat or yeah. vote for this Republican. And sure. so obviously now you have to you have to go down individually. And so, you know, I'm curious. What do you think that about affect? that? What, well, what I didn't. I fought it. Um, it was when I was in Senate um, that we passed that legislation. I very much fought it. I was like. Why can't we, you know, I, I, people should be able to either, if they want to vote straight ticket, vote it. If they want to go down individually and decide. Um, What's the so, argument against it? I I, you know, um, let's see, what were some of the arguments? Uh, and I don't even know why it was even something, why we even put it on the ballot. But I, you know, I just know in Tarrant County and I represented Tarrant County and certainly re represented the Republicans you know, we very much um, talked and preached about, you know, straight ticket voting, straight ticket voting. So I was like, wait, are, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, why are we doing this? You, yeah. you know, Seems odd. Um, yeah, it does. Uh, so and and because of all the coronavirus stuff, um, you know, the the, see, the uh, municipal elections that usually happen in, in May, a lot of that stuff is now on the ballot uh, in November, too. So 
I mean, there's going to be a lot wow. of stuff on the ballot, depending wow. on where you live. There sure. may be some school bonds. Um, there may be, I don't know, you know, college. I don't know. Lots of things could be on your yeah. ballot. So, wow. you know, are people going to are people going to walk in and vote for president and walk out, which they have done for years. Right. That's sure. nothing new. Uh, but, you know, are they going to I don't know. I don't know what this I don't know what it's going to bring. I really don't know. No. How's you're, you're that right. for an answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that per- pretty much sums up 2020. <laughs> every, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, uh, I, I, I completely get it. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's uh, I, I don't I definitely know. Completely get it. Um, what did you think about? Uh, did you see the first presidential I did, debate? The presidential debate. Ugh. Yeah. I was just, oh, right. just you know, crazy. yeah, it was. I don't think it served anybody well, really. I agree. Or my thoughts. Um, I agree. You know, um, here, here's the deal. On the one hand, I don't want to sound like, you know, oh, they shouldn't, you know, battle it out. Politics is a contact sport sometimes, right? You yeah. know, and sometimes we need to lighten up on that too and say, you know what, you know, a little going after each other isn't bad. But you couldn't hear what the other was saying, right? Yeah, you know, it was just exactly. everybody was uh, talking over everybody. It, it's so much of the time. It's like, okay, so in my mind, I don't think, Anybody moved away from Trump. I don't think anybody moved away from Biden. I think anybody who was undecided left still undecided. I, I, now, I, I don't have any proof of that, but sure. I don't know how they could have determined anything based on all of that over talk and, you know, blah, 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 and not just talking about the issues. Um, so, again, while I, I don't mind arguing and punching back in a non-physical way, sure. um, you know, no, I, I don't like that it. at all. But, you know, it was just all this over talk. I didn't know who was saying what half the time. So absolutely. So. I mean, that's how all of America felt for sure. Right. I, I, I turned it off and on a mul- multiple times just to be like, well, maybe I yeah. come back and they're they're being nice now. And then it wasn't, you know, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. Again, no matter what side you're on, it was just unacceptable. I mean, that just shows we, we've got to do something about the yeah. debates or something. Um, yeah, that's not serve. That's not serving, serving anybody. Anybody. That's correct. Right? That's and, and exactly so, how I thought. So many eyes were on that. Right. It was such a it big was. thing that we're all we all needed a lot of that uh, to make a decision. Totally agree. Right. Like and it's just sad because there's just so many big things happening that we need to right. talk about and we need to hear answers and we need to hear what you think about it, you know, That's one right. way or the other. So in fully coherent sentences from yeah. everybody, you know, yeah. I, I want to say it and say, you know, and then let us decide. And, you know, I am Chris Wallace. I wasn't real happy with him either. Not, not necessarily for a lot of the reasons a lot of talk, uh, other people talked about it. It's just like, you know, I don't know. I just, again, let them. I don't know what he could have done. I don't either. I don't either. I totally agree with you. You I'm not saying that I, 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 cause I kept saying to everybody, well, what was he supposed to do? He kept, you know, trying to stop people and, you know, um, but yeah, yeah, it was just, (laughs) I I just can't imagine (laughs) sitting in a room trying to make a decision with Donald Trump, like at all. I mean, forget if, Forget if he agrees with your policies or not, but like right. that's how you're going to communicate. I just don't even see how that's productive in any way, shape, or form. Um, exactly, and and he's you know it's it's interesting because and I, I would think it'd be kind of weird for a moderator. I mean, it, it, again, he is the president of the United States, regardless of what anybody thinks, right? So you're a news guy, and he's the yeah. president of the United States. That's got to be kind of weird and hard, anyway. You know, totally. You know, Good you point. want to be deferential and respectful, and then yeah. you know, just, I don't know. Like I said, it just yeah. it is again. It, yeah, I think yeah. we agree. It probably didn't help anybody really. I a hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, definitely yeah. to t- not help anybody um, at all. Um, now, this is kind of the biggest thing, in my opinion. You know, the biggest story is is pre- the president's COVID diagnosis. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's major. I mean, again, regardless of how you feel about him, this is our world leader, right? Our, well, uh, we sure. consider him our world leader, sure. you know, who's got this uh, virus, de- potentially deadly virus. I mean, it puts national security, puts all these things up in the air and just very scary, uh, to, to be honest with you. Is it? I see. I, I'm uh, totally, I don't know. I'm probably you're in government. Maybe you see it differently. I see yeah, like just I as do. a normal person, right? We're just looking around like, oh, shit, what's happening? <laughs> what is I mean, that's the le- legit, like my neighbors, really? my friends, my co. It's like, oh my God, what is, well, we don't know. 
We don't know yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have not. It's interesting um, because from the very beginning of this, I have, this has not made me nervous, anxious, anything. And I will tell you um, back. Do you remember when Ebola came over? Do you remember that? No. Um, and, and that I remember going, Oh, you know, <laughs> that kind of made me nervous um, because I'd read about Ebola for years, you know, and it's, it's just a nasty, icky, uh, and, it, you know, nobody has a cure for it. And I remember being kind of nervous when it came over and paying attention, but, you know, I mean, Ebola, who, who, who which could spread very quickly and we didn't have a, uh, a cure for, you know, we got through it. Um, and, and in my mind, um, I guess I, I went into this thinking that that was a much worse disease than uh, coronavirus. Um, and so while it's obviously impacted America and it's obviously impacted Texas and it's, you know, we, we all, of course, hearts and minds go out and prayers for all the people that it's affected and, and, you know, taken the lives of. Um, but since then, you know, um, you know, when we shut everything down for a couple of weeks, I was like, okay, this is worrisome. What's going on here? Right. You know, yeah. but I understood it because <clears throat> the focus was on getting our, our hospitals ramped up. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I get that. You know, I was like, okay, I get that. But over time, and, you know, we have somebody that's been watching the, the numbers, um, obviously for the Texan and it's just not, again, in my mind, what, how the media is reporting it and what the numbers are. It, it, it I see it very differently. Um, you know, um, first off, I will just kind of help let you and the listeners know that there's a lot of reporting issues <laughs> and, it, uh, you know, when government, which is a, bureaucratic, slow, lumbering organization. That's just the way it is. Um, when they're reporting data, you know, you have counties that are reporting it to the state and then the state is reporting the numbers to the people. And I'm just talking about Texas now, not other states. Yeah. But what we started seeing is, wait a minute, you know, all these, these counties had different criteria for what they were reporting as cases. Um, then we were realizing that um, there was backlogs and these backlogs were getting reported all like in one day, there were data dumps. And then HHS, our, that's the state agency that reports it, would all of a sudden show one day where <gasps> these high numbers were reported. Well, we knew because we were watching it and in looking that these high numbers didn't mean anything in terms of this day or this week, right? Yeah. Many media organizations in Texas were like, we're at the highest number ever, you know, and it was scaring people. And that was my frustration, right? Um, and by the way, high numbers is not bad as long as your hospitalizations and deaths are still low, right? And that's what we were seeing at times too, right? And yet everybody was still on, an, you know, very alarmed. And I was like, that the, you know, anyway, so, yeah. so I have not been alarmed from a, from a perspective. Uh, I have not been alarmed by this virus um, at all. Um, and, and very much on the side of, we need to focus on, you know, those with comorbidities, you know, the elderly, um, you know, all of, you know, the very typical things that we all, that we all know, right. And have for in, in all of history, you know, we take care of those who are most vulnerable, right? Sure. So, so I haven't, you know, so the fact that Trump got it didn't surprise me. It really yeah. didn't. And it, no, it didn't surprise worry. me. It doesn't really worry me either. I mean, and at this point, what are we seven months later? Um, another thing that I did, uh, sorry, uh, this is actually not, not finishing my sentence. It has to do with it. Um, I, early on, I also did a um, video interview with a doctor who was treating um, his uh, elderly patients in a nursing home. And, you know, say what you will about, you know, this um, medicine or that medicine. He was literally, I mean, people are getting through this with medications, but for some reason, there's, we've got several different ones, articles and uh, video interviews where literal doctors, and I'm talking about doctors in offices, not, you know, not these thinkers that are in a bureaucratic yeah. agency, right? These are doctors in the field 
that are um, treating their patients that are coming down with coronavirus and they're coming through beautifully, but it's not being talked about. And I don't get it. I mean, our governor's not talking about it and it's bizarre. I mean, there's hope out there and there has been hope for months and yet we can't seem to get through, you know, to those that should be talking about it to talk about it. I mean, we should always have, if there is real hope out there, we should be talking about it. Um, yeah. And it shouldn't be a political football, right? I mean, these are lives at stake. And if these doctors are treating people and they're getting through it, and and by the way, these are tre- people that have vulnerabilities too. Um, and they're different, they're different, um, what do you mean, regimens, I should say. Um, and so, so anyway, I, I have have seen it. I've talked to doctors. I've interviewed them um, where they're treating patients. So I think maybe that helps me, you know, not to be sure. worried or I, I, when Trump got it, I knew he'd get, you know, he'd be fine because he would have one of the uh, m- medical regimens that, ha- that have worked successfully. I knew he would get it. And, you know, he has, yeah. and I, it, I think the way that we should be looking at it. And again, hopefully, you know, the left, I mean, excuse me, the right would be looking at it. If it was Obama in the office and got it and got through it, we should be saying, Oh, this is great. You know, of course, absolutely. And this is hopeful. This is hopeful now, not sure. be angry that he, um, well, yeah. I'm angry that he got it for the sense that he didn't take it seriously enough. That that mm. angers me because it puts people at risk, in my opinion, um, mm. un, unknowingly. I mean, you've got people. Look, my first thought is not the president, not the White House, not the cabinet, not the. My first thought is the maids, the butler, the people mm-hmm. that are working, right? Just normal, everyday people like myself who are having to deal with the decisions they make. And I don't like right. that. That doesn't seem fair to me. You know, that, that's how, that's how I see it. Right. That sure. doesn't seem uh, he takes a risk for other people, in my sure. opinion. So that, that's how I saw it. Now, granted, I've had, um, you know, actually one of the scariest podcasts I ever did was I had a molecular biologist on who is uh, oh. actually working with the vaccines. Oh, uh, so, you know, one of the scariest podcasts, because, you know, Mother Nature, as he put it, is is the biggest serial killer of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I don't know. You know, I I definitely hear these thoughts about, well, the virus isn't this bad. And there's a, you know, these things. But then you talk to somebody like that who really knows, like, that's what they do, right? Like, I'm a chef, so I know food. If you're talking about food that I can talk about that all day long. Politics, I'm just, I'm reading, you know, that's your field. Um, So I listen, I just listen to people in their field and I listen to him and he says, take it seriously. He says this. Absolutely. I, 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 you know, what, what am I, what am I going to say? Well, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I do. (laughs) I do. Right. Like, it's like, nah, that, I just, A squared I don't plus know. B squared. Equals yeah. B squared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw, I saw an MS, MSNBC this morning, you know, I mean, he would have been like, dude, what are you talking about? So, you know, I, I'm there. Yeah. I, I think yeah. um, better, better safe than sorry. Uh, sure. But th- this is something I will say being from Texas and being a, a small business owner myself, uh, had a food truck in Austin for years. We, we, we have not done enough for businesses and enough for people asking them to shut oh, down and then not being there to, to take care of them. That, that's my, yeah. that's a major problem that I've had. It, I'm telling you, um, I, that's who I think about the most of the, not only the individuals, obviously, but the business owners through all oh, yeah. my gosh, horrible. Horrible I mean, it's absolutely horrible. Can't stand horrible. it. Can't yeah. stand it. Yeah. Just, um, yeah, I've had so many, look, I had, um, have you ever heard of the peach tortilla? In Austin, I don't know that I have. I'm sure next time you come, ask ask some of your staff. They'll know peach okay, tortilla in Austin. Know, I'm I mean, sure. it's, it's all massive. my youngsters down there will be like, "What are you talking about?" Come yeah, they know peach tortilla. Well, I talked to Eric Silverstein just recently. Um, he just had him on the podcast. This episode comes out soon. And li- li- listen to this number. This is how much his sales dropped: ninety five percent. And it stayed that way for months. So it wasn't. I don't know like, how you get through that. I don't know. And how granted, you get I, I'm looking online thinking he's doing okay because he's they're selling to go, they're selling take. I'd rather doing all this stuff. They're all over the internet, and he's like, "No, dude, that's nothing." It's like so. Then yeah. I'm thinking, well, what about the other businesses that aren't doing anything? What are exactly. they doing? Exactly. Exactly. And it's not just, and it isn't just restaurants. Obviously, I know you know this. I'm not debating you, but you know, just to tell you, like my dry cleaner that I've dry gone clean. to. Yeah. Forever and ever and ever. I mean, I remember our little girls were the same um, age and now they're 29 ish, you know, and and I went to her, you know, long months later because we didn't 
need, my husband didn't need, you know, the regular dry cleaning. And I said, how's it going? She just, uh, she said the same thing. It was about 95% down. And, you know, you know, and I, and I remember thinking, I wouldn't have thought about a dry cleaner instantaneously. Right. Yeah. Um, but once I got in there and I was like, Oh my gosh, no, nope, people aren't really going to work on a regular basis. And generally that's the kind of clothes you might have, you know, yeah. at the dry cleaner. Right. And yeah, for sure. Uh, so, and it, you know, it just trickles down, of course. Right. The, the people who work for the people who cannot. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's awful. That's, awful. that's exactly right. Yeah. It's yeah. awful. It's a, it's just a, you know, look around and just go, man, we're all screwed. You know, it's yeah. one of the few times, right. It's one of the few times you, you think in the world, okay, we're all just screwed together. You know, just, just, <laughs> at, least, at least we have that in common. You know, like, but yeah, like, um, yeah, exactly. You know, I don't, I don't know what to think about. I t you know, it's, I've just never, you know, in my young 40 years, I've never had a situation where, you know, I've got friends that live in different parts of the world. I've never had something where we all have this thing in common that exactly. we're going through. Isn't that weird? I think about that all the time is that, you know, a lot of times things affect Texas or another state or yeah. even your regional area, you know, and I think about that all the time. It's like everybody in the world, yeah. <laughs> you know, given a few, it went through this or go or, or know about it yeah. all at the same time. Uh, it's, yeah. It's weird. Very. Strange. It is. It is weird. And, you know, personally, like here locally, I, I don't know anybody that has um, gotten very. I've known people they've gotten here locally, but not anybody that's gotten sick or passed away. But in Spain, where my wife's uh, family is from and part of her family, they have passed away. They, they mm -hmm. have. It has been horrible. I mean, I'm just like, yeah. OK, th this is. Whoa. OK, this is like real deal. And it's one of these turns where it just happens. They're yes. fine one day. And then a few days later it's gone. I mean, it's just Absolutely. like, whoa. Absolutely. So I guess th those, those moments make me take pause. I mean, what sure. am I going to do? Right. They, sure. they do make me take pause and, and think about it a little bit again, better safe than sorry on a lot of this stuff. So I don't know, but I'm with you. It's the unpredictability is, is the hardest thing I think for businesses, for people yes. just not knowing how to plan, yes. right? Like, well, let's yes. plan for this. Let's plan for that. We can't no, we don't know exactly. what's going to happen. And I, I totally disagree with um, the the way that we are reopening um, because it doesn't give any more predictability. Um, you know, it's like it's all these numbers, you know, this percentage based on that percentage of this percentage. And it's like, what? <laughs> How can a businessman sit around? You know, OK, I just want to sell tacos in this taco yeah. chat, you know, <laughs> determine all right how many hospitalizations do we have and 75 percent of this and I mean, it's ridiculous i i I, I, I hate it no, i hate it no i i i 100 agree on all that yeah it's yeah. it's the way the stuff with the businesses is it's just been a nightmare i've just had too many conversations with too many business owners right. and, and i shut my food truck down last march last south by was my last event and thank god i mean i my, oh. my, I, I must have had a crystal ball or something i just didn't even I mean, oh, I don't so know you where willingly I shut it down? Yeah, so yeah. I, it was five years. I was done. I was. Oh like, my okay, gosh! I'm, I'm done, and uh, thank God. I mean, yes. where would I be? And, yes. You know, I don't even know. I'd be where my friends are at, and and the mm. stress that they're going through. It's already stress running a, a food business. We're That's right. A business. That's right. 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 You're seven days a week, right? You're working like crazy. Yep. Now, now throw a pandemic on top. I mean, it's just I can't even imagine. I, mean, I just insane. can't even. Uh, yeah, it's insane. It's a, it is insane. Um, okay. So we talked a little bit about the, <laughs> the VP debates. Yeah. We both thought that was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so look, there's been a lot of, um, you know, the black lives matter movement started years ago, I believe yep. uh, three or four years ago now. And, and now it's really taken a front and center, you know, to what's happening in, in America right now, whether people just have a lot of time on their hands or, you know, whatever's going on, uh, you know, me personally, I'll just st I'll state this. I, I do agree with the movement. But I think there's parts of the movement that have been politicized. I think anyone who agrees with me would see that. And I don't like that for sure. Um, I don't like the rioting or, you know, again, we're going to talk about business owners. I'm not in for burning down uh, businesses. Um, right. But I do agree with the, the movement in the sense that there do needs to be some changes. Um, so I'm just curious from your political perspective, like, you know, one, if you're willing to say if you agree with it or not agree with it and why and what you think, how can government play a role? in this movement. Yeah. So um, first and foremost, do I believe Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. No questions asked, right? Now, 
there's a difference. And like, I think this is where you're talking about the politicization that I have to say the organization Black Lives Matter. I read, I went through and read what they stand for and what they believe in. And uh, it, it, it is a political organization of which I do not agree with, right? We're, we're on different sides of, of politics on, but do I believe Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. I mean, there was a lot of things, you know, it's, it's since then, um, it has been, scru- uh, they've changed a lot of their about us. Um, just the nuclear like family months. thing, right? Yes, all I of that, it. you know, and it. obviously- I didn't like that either. Right. I mean, it's like, oh, that's kind of the cornerstone of America, sure. you know, and, and, but, uh, but I also get why they said it. See, this is my problem. Oh, absolutely. I, I, no, no, no. Like, I understand it too. You know, but from a political perspective, it's but like, I didn't like it either. This means you. that, you know, and yeah, so, with, so I, I don't agree politically with that. Now, um, also, you know, obviously America is about, um, you know, it, it, the freedom and the beauty of America is people can peacefully assemble so that they can create change. And absolutely, you should peaceably assemble. Now, where it crosses over to destruction, that's wrong. And you're going to lose true. people. Now, yeah. whether, and, and it was sad because so many videos I saw were people that were, that were just marching for, you know, uh, the black life that had ended, all of a sudden, you know, there was these other people that were, you know, destroying property. And some of those people were like, what are y'all doing? You know, and, and, you know, unfortunately, it get, you know, movements get co-opted. And that's not to say that the whole movement did, uh, you know. Uh, and again, like I said, that actual organization, I, I don't agree with politically, but I really to, to get back to the piece, you have to peaceably assemble. It's just that's the way that you make change um, after that you don't have a voice anymore um I, and i yeah. don't i don't in the bigger picture is what i sure. mean you know what i mean i know um, what you mean though I, right I know um mean. so so you know the best way and and certainly you know you should march but then you have to get active in your community um you know how people are voting what kind of um you know elected officials you're sending to you know your your county your state um not just the president you know people that's really shouldn't he shouldn't have that much to do with our daily lives. It's unfortunate. We've gotten so upside down um, with our government and that's really the last person you should care about. (laughs) And it's, it seems it's all, we're all consuming about the president. Um, So, you know, um, I was huge, a huge advocate of criminal justice reform when I was in Austin. Um, There's a lot of ways that you can um, affect change there. Um, You know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I always look at it as feathers and a lot of elected officials on both sides of the aisle want a feather in their cap. And, and frankly, mm, there's, we've got a lot of laws on the books. We got a lot of laws on the books (laughs) and you know, we don't really need a whole lot more laws on the books. Um, And, and so um, what happens is they're like, you know what? I'm going to take this offense and even and throw a higher criminal penalty on it. That's a big part of what a lot of elected officials do down there. Again, both sides of the aisle, Dems do it too. And um, because they want to go back and they say, I made this an even worse offense, you know, and you're like, well, why, you know, (laughs) they were already going to, you know, pay a fine or they were already going to go to jail for this amount of time, but no, we're going to throw them in the slammer for two years now. And it was like, yeah, but they just, you know, um, signed a form wrong. And you're saying that's fraud that needs to be for two years, you know? So those are the kinds of things, you know, that people don't think of that you can right here today, pay attention to down at the legislature, because I got to be known as somebody, uh, they would say, uh, go, go get Senator Burton's, you know, go get her. Okay. <laughs> passes, and I loved it. And I'd say, uh, uh-uh, uh, you know, because here's the deal. I think we, hopefully we can all agree that e- the time needs to equal the crime. Right. And then once they have served their time, let them get out let them go and be productive members of society, right? Isn't that what we want, yes. right? And yet, 
And yet, because they were like, I'm going to, you know, because people love that. Then they go, yeah, throw the book at them, you know. So they get into this like frenzy to pass legislation that makes something that's really a minimal crime even worse. Right. And here, I, you know, I'm like, okay. at the same time, I'm doing all this criminal justice reform. I have to stop legislation over here that's, you know, on the floor that's that's making a harsher penalty on stuff all day, every day. Um, And so, you know, I mean, if it does, if it's deserving of it, certainly violent crime is very different than nonviolent crime. Right. I'm not saying that they should not be punished at all. Another aspect of criminal justice reform that was um, very interesting is how the government itself impedes people after they have served their time to to become productive citizens. So, for instance, some things like, uh, you know, once you're incarcerated, you know, maybe they would get educated on different, um, uh, I'm trying to say, uh, work, uh, um, not even, you know, ways to work once you come get outside of jail. For instance, a hairdresser, you know, learn to cut hair. Um, this will get trained in this. So when you get out, you can get it, at least have something, you know, to fall back on to so you can earn money and that kind of thing. Okay. So, well, (laughs) depending on the crime that you're in there for, um, then after you get out, oh, you can't be a hairdresser because you will have, you know, because you'll have something. Scissors or something in your hand. Yes, yes. Even though maybe their crime had nothing to do. You know, obviously, if you are somebody that stabbed somebody to death, they're not going to teach you to be a hairdresser in in jail, right? (laughs) So people that are getting this education are have not done those kinds of crime. And yet they couldn't do that job. They could not get a license. That's what I should say. They couldn't get a license to do that job, even though they were trained to do it while they were incarcerated. So I, you know, worked on those kinds of things, licensing. I'm going to tell you something a lot of people don't know. And frankly, a lot of people on the left want um, is licensing, you know, they believe a lot in licensing different occupations. But all licensing really does is that it prevents those who need to get into that uh, form of uh, line of work from doing it because they don't have the money for the licensing. And the license doesn't make sure that they're going to, it doesn't do anything. It's just a government piece of paper. You're paying the government permission to start this business is what you're doing. You know, Um, I get, you know, and I'm not, I don't don't want anybody to misconstrue misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not saying anybody should just do anything willy nilly. Uh, (laughs) I'm just saying that a lot of these licensing, they're just, it's just money that the, the, they need, you know, wants to balance the budget with, it doesn't help anybody, uh, particularly low income, particularly people who have been incarcerated, you know, how are they going to get out and they go, okay, now I have to pay, you know, hundreds of dollars to get my license to do this job that you trained me to do that now I can't, I don't have any money to do. So it, it, those are the kinds of things that I really worked hard on. Um, and I, I hope somebody's picking up the mantle down there for that because it's a huge problem. It really is. I love that. Wow. I love that so much, Good. Connie. Good. Yeah. I love that so much. Uh, again, that's something no matter what side you're on, that's something that's you can right. get behind. At least that's I think right. so. Um, I think I, so too. I, I think that's the whole point of, I don't know, like, you know, it's funny when I lived in Europe, th- this is actually the, the biggest conversation I had with people is, especially when they knew I was from Texas was they want to talk about jails and, um, the death penalty and how we treat, um, mm-hmm. you know, our prisoners, sure. uh, because sure. they have a much different outlook, uh, well, depending on what country you're in, but it, just a much different outlook on what that means. It's about rehabilitation. It's about this person made a mistake and we're trying to get them back in society, not throw away the key lot, you That's know, right. That's right. Forget about them. And let me just interject because I don't think a lot of people know a lot of counties are doing great work. So don't, you know, I think there's an impression out there that Texas is very, and and maybe in some ways it is. I mean, you know, uh, you can't really say one way or the other across the board, but I want to tell you, counties are doing great work in uh, providing services, you know, rather first and foremost, going through courts that help them in different ways. Um, You know, so even in, you know, like Tarrant County, it's Republican DA, Republican, um, you know, um, elected officials, and they work very, very hard to make sure that they can get the services they need so that they can be productive citizens afterwards. So, I, I, you know, there is right. an impression out there that, um, you know, we're not doing anything. And I'm saying in both Democratic and Republican 
areas, counties throughout Texas, there's a lot of good reforms going on. So, so no, don't throw awesome. away, you know, so I, I hope that people understand that more. No, for sure. Um, I, I hope you didn't think that's what I was trying to get. I guess I was just trying to get at the fact that what, what happens when or what their perception is when they are in jail. Not maybe not the stuff oh, to help right. them or this or that. Like sure, once they're in jail, sure. what we think of that person. Okay, they're sure. a criminal. I'm done with them. Right. They're they're right. done to me. Um, forget it. You're a felon. You're the and it's right. just a much different perception Interesting. over there in Spain. In mm-hmm. fact, my sister-in-law works at a prison. She's a social worker. So they even the way they handle and her boyfriend at the time, it was for many years, was a security guard and he didn't carry around a weapon or now he's like, dude, I have a pen. Like, that's it. There's no wow, now that's shocking to me. It's shocking to me. I was yeah. like, from Texas, like yeah. I, I'm used to aviators and a, and a hat and a, a six shooter. And, right, you know, like there's something yeah. happening. He's like, no, I wear regular clothes just like you see me. And uh, but I'm a secure. It's like we're just I don't, it's just a they just have a different it outlook on it. You're right. right. Like, You're right. They're normal clothes. A lot of them are allowed to even have like work programs and leave their it's, I don't know. It's, it's all of like, okay, you're here. What mistake did you make? What are we going to make sure that you don't prevent this instead of you need to be punished? Right. Right. And I don't know that that was the difference, I guess, that I feel in America is that we're, we're here to punish you for things you've done, which I under, I get the fact you've made a mistake. You do need to be punished, but we need to make sure that those people come back out into society because they're going to be your neighbor. They're going to be your mailman. They're going to be serving you your food. They're going to be whatever they're going to be doing, right. They're going to come back into society. So absolutely. Right. And and that's where you have to make a difference in, you know, there needs to be differences in the types of uh, crimes committed and the punishments, you know, that come forth. and, and, And that's where a lot of it boils down to. So, you know, I hope that we continue on that road while, And by the way, I want to say this because obviously victims of crime must be thought about too. And I think that's a lot of where, you know, people get very frustrated, you know, they, well, what about the victim? And absolutely. That's true. That's a good point. We've got a victim here too. And so more important probably. Yes. Yes. And so their needs and concerns also need to be addressed. So I'm not talking about not, um, not having them uh, receive punishment for, um, you know, the crimes they've committed. It's just that let's not make it harder or worse than it has to be, whatever it is, right? You know, they need to get punished for murder, my God, is, you know, a very different punishment than, um, you know, a forged check when you were 20 years old, you know, you know, something like that, right? You know, and while that's wrong, and you've you've broken the law, and you shouldn't do it, um, you know, should it follow you until you're 50 years old, if you've never done another thing wrong, you know, uh, there's and and I I think so much of the time we lump everybody doesn't see the nuances in all of this. Right. And so if you want criminal justice reform, you're soft on crime, you know, (laughs) Um, you know, or you're not, you know, you know, the victims, everybody has to be thought about in in all of these situations. So the victims are very much in my hearts as well when when looking through all of this. But if there is a victimless crime, you know, that's very different. Right. Um, That's a great point. Uh, Yeah, no, that's a great point to make. You know, it's funny. It's to say, like, I'm for uh, criminal justice reform. Oh, you're soft on crime. That's such an odd thing, because if you think about it, they're actually like more into it, right? They're actually like, no, I actually think we should take a closer look at crime and exactly. how we treat it. And right. So it's exactly. actually the complete opposite of, sure. of that. You know, sure. it's such an and it's thing. what happens with, you know, uh, again, soundbite, of polit- yeah. politics, 24 right. hour a day, you know, everybody can lob this little phrase. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh God. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know, I'll leave, I'll leave the, before we're going to move on to one last quick topic about voting, okay. uh, but that'll be the oh, last okay. thing we end on. But before we go, I want to tell you this funny story to our listeners and our viewers too. And to you, this was, this was kind of interesting about criminal justice reform. So I believe the country is Norway or Sweden, but they, this gentleman had, murdered somebody with a chainsaw okay that that, that, i know it sounds horrific well listen to what they did so they they got them in not a jail but they have these like homes that are out in the woods and people live in these homes the criminals the 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 prisoners do and they're allowed to go in and out of the house and do what they want but in this little community right there's this old little place well that guy that had killed somebody with a chainsaw they actually you know what they had him do you know his job was cutting down trees with a chainsaw oh my god so what their their thought was, OK, w- you know, 
We're going to wow. try to understand why he did this. And we're going to actually make him work with the tool he used to kill somebody to respect it, learn it. I, was, I thought it was very interesting. I'm Boy. not saying let's do that. I'm just saying. Right. It's right. And it's probably very extreme, but just. just that's a to leap for me, but about. it's weird, right? It is. It's I mean, you do. To think about maybe it sure. all it does for me, all it does is say, okay, there are different approaches to take. That's all I Absolutely. get from that. I'm not saying that's sure. the approach we need to sure. take, but sure. You know, that there is are different approaches. Wow. Right? Very, wow. Super crazy. Super yeah, crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, um, yeah. So, okay. So voting. Yes. Let, let's end on voting here. So one, okay. how important is voting? And you know, right. I mean, super it important. is. I mean, unfortunately, like I said, uh, um, politics involves too many in my mind aspects yeah. of our lives. And um, so because it does, it's so important, but you know what? I'm going to tell y'all what is more important than voting is to become an informed voter. Don't take those sound bites. Don't, you know, we all lob them, you know. <laughs> but don't vote on the sound bites. I yeah. mean, just like our deep conversation here about criminal justice reform. And, you know, who would think, I mean, and, and I know it's, to most people, I'm an anomaly. It's not true, though, that a conservative Republican worked hard on criminal justice reform. There were several Republicans down there that did, and several Democrats who did. And several that I fought Republicans and several Democrats I fought as Democrats on this, right? So everybody does not fit into this nice little bubble that people want to think they do, right? Yeah. I mean, our basic beliefs are, yes, the same, you know, uh, across the board. But there are nuances with all of us, you know. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, while Republicans are all very different, yes, we all believe in supposedly limited government, but I don't, I don't see that. But anyway... <laughs> Love it. Um, you know, um, so Love so it. mainly be an informed um, voter uh, and, I, you know, go to people's own websites, listen directly to them. Um, you know, when you can get an extended conversation, get involved in organizations that, you know, are truly kind of um, what issue based. So you can kind of learn more about that issue. You yeah. may be very surprised that you know what? I thought this is what this party believed in. I thought this is what this party believed in, but it's kind of just what I'm being fed. Sure. Right. So I just want people more than anything uh, is to be an informed voter, whatever that means for them. Love that. Love that a lot. That's Good. I agree. Uh, right. Absolutely. Get out there and be informed. Yeah. That's a, wow. What a great way to inspirational way to end <laughs> uh the podcast uh, for sure um good yeah because uh, right the election's coming up what do we got um i don't know oh. 20, I, my math's not good i'm looking yeah, at my I watch trying to figure out. i hardly know and it's weird we should know what every day is because you know we haven't worked for nah i mean i'm not really yeah. you know but and it's like every, nobody knows what day it is it's so weird you know we should know exactly what day and time it is every day and everyone's like is it still march i yeah. don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's how it feels uh, <laughs> You're right. That is hilarious. That is so funny. Oh, well, uh, Connie, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this conversation. Really, yeah, me I, too. I, guess I can't me tell too. you how much uh, I enjoy this. Uh, this is a Good. perfect example of what this podcast is about. Just bringing people on to have real conversations. I love it. Uh, you know, to dig really deep at the issues. And even if they disagree on things, right, we still talk. I mean, this is like, yep. that's the biggest thing we need to come to. That's right. We disagree, but we can still talk. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Because exactly. so we're always going to disagree. That's, that's right. That's know. right. That's right. And and it shouldn't be hate uh, in yeah. our hearts because of that. That's the beauty, again, of our country and our state is that we can disagree and we can say it openly and we don't get thrown yeah. in jail <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, <laughs> it, you know, and these are good yeah. things. This, these I are agree. good things. So when we got your email, when I got your email, I was like, oh, this will be fun. I, you know, I was excited to get it. So thank you for 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 inviting me on because I've enjoyed it as well. Oh, well, absolutely. No, it's been absolutely wonderful. I know our listeners and viewers are going to just be thrilled with this um, conversation. So, <laughs> um, yeah. well, I wish you the best, um, you know, Thank through you. the week here, Connie. My best to you and your family. You know, you guys Thank can be safe out there. And um, yeah, thank you again for, for you coming up. You bet. Good Thank you. It was so great talking to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Connie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> the Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, 
artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Oh, 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 o